Um, I think now it's James' turn. Uh, he will talk a bit about insects. Are you there, James? Sure am. Well, welcome and thank you a lot. Feel free to start whenever you want. You have a presentation, right? Yep, I do. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, good morning or afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, my name is James. I'm a master's student at UMCE in Chile studying entomology. Uh, and I'm here to teach you guys a little bit about arthropods and spe more specifically insects, because um, that's kind of my area of specialty. Um, going to teach you a little bit about what you might find out there, um, some general groups and tips for identifying them, and then some techniques for catching them. So some of you probably just asked yourself, what is an arthropod? Um, so it is a phylum in the kingdom Animalia, which to put it in context, any vertebrate, so mammals, fish, birds, they're all in one phylum, the chordata. Um, and there's a whole, whole nother world of invertebrates out there. Um, super diverse phylum, millions and millions of species, which means that basically any rule I tell you, there's always going to be an exception because things are just, there's so many species that there's no, it's almost impossible to make hard and fast rules. Um, and you can see some examples of arthropods up here. Um, and if you look in the bottom right, um, you can kind of see a couple arthropods with typical features pointed out. So those are jointed appendages, usually legs, um, a segmented body plan, just one after the other, little slices, um, and an, a hardened external skeleton or exoskeleton. Um, and these appendages, you only find one pair per segment, and that's pretty important. Um, so some types of arthropods that you're going to find. These are probably the four most common subgroups. They are insects, arachnids, crustaceans, and myriapods. Insects, um, the way to distinguish really between all these groups is how many legs do they have? How many body parts do they have? And sometimes there's a few other things. So for insects, it's six legs, and they have three real distinct parts of their head, of their body, excuse me, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. They have antennae, they usually have wings. You guys probably can, can pick one out. Um, arachnids, they have an extra pair of legs, so eight. They only have two main body parts because their head and their thorax have been fused to make what's called a cephalothorax. They usually have eight eyes and they don't have antennae or wings. Um, crustaceans would be things like crabs or prawns or shrimp. They have yet another pair of legs with 10 and they also have a cephalothorax. And finally, the myriapods, those are just gonna be your centipedes or millipedes, and you'll know them because they have a ton of legs. Um, there's a bunch of other groups out there, but these are the ones you're most likely to see. Um, now I'm gonna show you just a couple common arachnids specifically. So spiders and, tar and tarantulas, you guys, wherever you are in the world, these will be there. Um, this is a wolf spider, which is one of the more common kind of free roaming, pretty large visible species. They don't make webs, so just find them wandering around. Um, scorpions are arachnids. Um, they're, not, they're not aggressive. Don't be put off by the sting. Don't step on one, but other than that, you should be fine. Um, there are ticks and mites out there, which the way to distinguish them, mites are hairy, ticks are not. They're small. You probably won't see them unless you're looking for them. Um, so now, I'm gonna move on to the insects. And there's a, there's, a, there's a bunch of information. It's okay if you don't remember it all. I just wanna try and introduce some general things so you have, you have an idea of what you might find. Um, so here are the most common orders of insects, just generally in the world. Up top, we have the beetles or Coleoptera. Um, they're generally identifiable by the fact that they have a pretty rounded back and it's very hard. Um, here, you can actually see this is a diving beetle um, that lives in water, so you could, you could easily find one of his relatives um, at your river. Um, what's crazy about beetles is they make up somewhere between 30 to 40 percent of all known animal species. Not insect species, animal species. So they are super, super diverse. Um, to put that diversity into context a little bit, this thing in the top right is also a beetle. 
It doesn't look like it, but it's actually part of the largest group of beetles in the world, the rogue beetles, which have a very soft abdomen at the back. Um, the next most common group are the flies or diptera. So this is kind of your, your classic fly body plan with the big compound eyes in the front. The easiest way to tell something is a fly is that it only has one pair of wings where most other insects have two. Um, if you're by a river, there's a good chance you'll run into mosquitoes or midges or gnats or something else shaped like that. And those are actually all flies too, even if they don't look like your typical house fly. Um, next are the true bugs or hemiptera. Um, I chose one here that's pretty common around me in water. Uh, it's a water strider. Um, but hemiptera in general are flatter um, than beetles. They're often, they can be confused sometimes because they are also kind of a hard back thing, but they're flatter. And the, another way to tell is that with a beetle, if it has a line on its back, it'll be straight down the middle between the halves of its, of its outer shell, where in a hemiptera, it'll kind of be an X shape where its wings cross over each other. Um, next, you have your orthoptera, which are crick crickets and grasshoppers. Those are pretty distinctive. Um, the easiest way to tell, look for this big old back leg um, and this shape. Um, you've got your bees, wasps, and ants, which are hymenoptera. And again, those are probably things you guys are familiar with, but um, the very narrow waist is something that they all share in common. Um, and finally, you have the lepidoptera, which are butterflies and moths. And again, you guys probably know them. Um, you can gen they have scaly, softer wings than most insects, and they often are much more colorful. And you'll see them flying around. Um, so now those are the ones that you'll find pretty much anywhere you go in the world, including along a riverbank. Um, but here are a couple that are specifically associated with water. Um, so these are, we've got your dragonflies and damselflies, which have this very distinctive body shape with the kind of long extended abdomen that they use for balance and a, a big head in front, almost like a helicopter cockpit. Um, and they have these big, broad wings. Um, you have mayflies known as ephemeroptera because they're very ephemeral. They usually live a day or so at most. Um, they have this, curved body shape with kind of two long um, spikes sticking out at the end. There's technical names for them, but don't worry about it. Um, and they always kind of carry their wings upright, directly above them, like you see here. Um, there's stoneflies, which are here in the middle left. Um, these guys, they're a little harder to distinguish, but usually if you see something long and thin like this next to a riverbed, that's probably a pretty good bet. Um, your caddis flies are over here. They can be sometimes confused with moths, but the way they keep their wings, um, if you look towards the back, there's almost a little triangle shape, like a little tent at the back. And that's usually pretty distinctive of a caddis fly, along with these very long antennae for its body size. Um, next, there are the Dobson flies or Megaloptera, which are usually, they're predominantly found in North America, um, and they're pretty distinctive with these big mandibles that look intimidating, but they don't bite, they're, they're for mating displays, um, but they're also things you're really only going to find by fresh water. So what's really cool about these guys is, is that the uh, mayflies, stoneflies, and caddisflies they're all super sensitive to water quality. So there's this thing called the EPT index for their Latin names that is just the proportion of larvae found in a river or a stream or a lake that are these three orders. And that's actually used by things like government agencies to assess river water quality. Um, so if you guys are seeing these or their larvae along your river, that's a great sign that it's a clean, healthy ecosystem. Um, and just to give you a quick idea of what the larvae look like, that's here in the bottom right. I could give another half an hour presentation just on trying to sort out which larvae are which, so I'm not going to dive into that right now because it's really complicated. But if you see generally, if you see something with six legs like this crawling around in there, it's probably a larvae of one of these guys, and that's a great, great sign. So now that I've dumped all these insect orders, the real question is, 
How do we catch these? How do we make this happen for our bio blitz? So the ideal is just take a picture. You don't even have to catch them. If they're just, if something's just sitting on some plants on a log and you have your camera there and you can zoom in enough to get a good picture, just snap it. You can get a macro lens off Amazon um, that can attach or clip on over your phone camera and give you a lot of zoom and they're 10, $20. So if that's in your budget range or something you're interested in, something I would recommend. Um, some insects that don't fly or move super fast, you can just kind of pick up and put in a little jar or a vial like this. I think with, with most of these techniques I'm gonna show you, the end destination is gonna be a jar, something clear where you can take a picture inside. Um, just because they like to fly away otherwise. Um, so a pretty simple thing that almost anyone can access is just sampling with nets or buckets. Um, nets are great. You can grab something that you see flying, or as this guy's demonstrating, you can kind of just sweep it through grass or bushes and then see what comes out in it at the end. And that's a great way to survey some of the insects that you might not see as easily normally. Um, Kind of same goes with the bucket. That'd be more if you're trying to look for something at the river's edge, just kind of dig it down into the into the glunk. If you can rinse some water through it and you'll, you'll end up with whatever larvae or small insects were crawling around in there. Um, here we have someone demonstrating bush feeding for, or brush feeding for us. For this, all you need is a big piece of canvas or something else white and wide that you can hold underneath and something to hit bushes with. Um, there's insects everywhere. They'll, they'll fall out just right onto your thing. Um, you can then just scoop them into jars or take photos right there, whatever's easiest for you. Um, this guy on the right here is demonstrating a homemade aspirator. Um, there's kind of fancy custom-made ones that, that professional entomologists will use, but it's really easy to make one yourself. All you need is two straws or tubing or something else flexible that air can pass through and some sort of jar that you can put holes in the lid for and you've got it right here because you, you just pull, suck in, the insect goes in the tube, ends up with it in the jar, and you can take your picture. Um, so those are kind of some, some techniques, um, but just some, some kind of general advice for finding insects is it's, it's a pretty different strategy from say bird watching where you're probably gonna be slowly walking, quietly looking for things. Um, if you walk and look for insects, you're really only gonna see either the biggest, the most colorful or the most active. So I really recommend if you want a more full idea of biodiversity to slow down or stop somewhere and really dig into the leaf litter or open some flower buds and see what's inside, take a look at the bark of a tree, because most insects don't want to be seen because that means you get eaten. So if, if you really want to see what's out there, you kind of got to poke around, get in the dirt a little bit. And it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and so these are all things you can kind of do pretty simply in one day. Um, if you guys have interest in getting a little deeper, um, these are just a couple examples of some traps um, that require a couple more days time investment. Um, the simplest one that I, anyone can set up is a pitfall trap. All it is is a container set flush to the ground that you dig a hole for. Um, insects, they're not that smart. They'll walk straight in, they'll fall in. Um, if, as long as you check it every few days, it's a great way to find just stuff that's crawling on the ground. If there's something in specific that you want to attract, you can put some sort of um, bait in the center in another little container, but you can also just leave it. Um, generally a good idea to put a little rain cover like you see here, because if it rains, you don't want to lose all your samples. Um, over here on the top right, you see how effective a light lure can be. You can set these up with white canvas, with a wall, with a big sheet of paper, and pretty much any sort of light will work. UV light's the best because insects love it, but even just a little clip on lamp, that'll work. Um, these bottom two, I'm not gonna spend too much time on because these will really only happen if you have more specialized materials, but this is just kind of to give you an idea of what a, a more advanced entomology survey might look like. Um, on the left, it's a flight intercept trap, which is basically just a clear pane of plastic. Insects fly right into it. 
and then they drop into this little trough at the bottom that's full of some sort of preservative usually. Um, and then these on the right are what are called emergence traps. So you put them over places in the river where you've seen a bunch of those larvae. And then when they turn into adults and they try and fly away, they fly right up into this mesh. Um, and just a quick note on bait in general, um, you can use all sorts of baits to attract different types of insects. That could be rotting fruit, that could be some sort of honey, it could be dung, it really could be rotting meat. It really depends on what you're trying to find. Um, you can look it up online. There's all sorts of guides on specific things like that. Um, and I think, uh, okay, so yeah, some quick, quick conclusions. Um, even if you guys don't remember, like I said, any of the orders I said, I know I dropped a lot at once. What I really want you to take away is that arthropods and insects are everywhere and you need them for your ecosystem to work. Um, they're food, they're cleaners, they're decomposers. We would not be living without them. Um, and there are so many of them that anything I told you, there will always be exceptions. Kind of to illustrate that diversity, Right here is a giraffe weevil, which I try and include in as many presentations as possible because look at how gloriously weird it is. It's, um, it, I just love it. Um, and finally, just that, that entomology really is accessible at a very low level. You don't need a lot of fancy tools. You don't need a lot of resources. You don't need to have gone to school for it. You need hands, a camera, and a willingness to go get down in the dirt or look around in some plants. It's it's all just up to if you're willing to, to put in put in the time to kind of discover this whole other beautiful world that's down there that most people don't ever see. Um, if you guys have any questions or you just want to send me a picture of a cool bug you found or you want help trying to identify something, here's my contact info. I'm happy to help out anyone who needs it. Um, thanks for having me. Thank you, James. I think uh, as, as well as Angelina, your love for the insects was uh, all, like pouring out of the screen when I was hearing your presentation. The same with Jelena's love for birds. It was really cool. Um, yeah, feel free to, for the people. Thank you for also sharing your contact with us. So if anybody has any further question and are, is excited about uh, trying some insect uh, te techniques to, to see some insects on the field, it will be nice to contact you. Um, so now 